Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at some evidence for the Big Bang. So let's get started. The first piece of evidence for the Big Bang is redshift and Hubble's law. And these are two things that we've looked at throughout this topic. It says that Hubble's law suggested that galaxies are moving away from us and each other, and therefore that the universe is expanding. So remember Hubble's law stated that the recessional velocity of galaxies was directly proportional to their distance away from us. And the whole idea about redshift, remember, was that light from these distant galaxies would be getting stretched out as they move away from us over time. And that means that the absorption lines in the spectra for distant galaxies galaxies shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. If we were to go back in time, then there must have been a moment when the universe was at a single point, that singularity, remember. So both Hubble's law and redshift provide evidence for the Big Bang. Another way of thinking about it is that if the universe is expanding, then it must have started off at some initial point, because if we go back in time, then space will contract until that single point. Another piece of evidence is the cosmic microwave background radiation. It says here that in 1964, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson accidentally detected background radiation coming from all directions in space. They actually thought it was a problem to do with their radio telescope, but then after lots more testing, realised it was something that other people were actually trying to find. So it was realised that this was radiation left over from an early stage in the development of the universe. Originally, this radiation was at much shorter wavelengths, but the expansion of the universe has caused the wavelengths to increase over time, i.e. stretch, and the peak wavelength is now in the microwave part of the spectrum. So the wavelength of the radiation released at the time of the Big Bang must have been lower than the wavelengths in the microwave region. But now because the wavelengths of that radiation have increased over time, that radiation can now be detected as microwave radiation. Remember that radiation is at about 2.7 Kelvin or about minus 270 degrees Celsius, which gives us an average temperature for the universe. And moving on, it says the temperature of the universe. As the universe expanded, it also cooled down and now has a temperature of 2.7 Kelvin just above absolute zero. So remember, absolute zero is zero Kelvin, but 2.7 Kelvin in degrees Celsius is about minus 278 degrees Celsius. So it's actually pretty cold. And that gives us an average temperature of the universe. This confirms predictions made as part of the Big Bang Theory. So the fact that the universe was thought to begin really hot and it's now much cooler. The second last piece of evidence we'll look at is called Olber's Paradox. Consider this. If the universe is static, infinite, infinitely old, and contains an infinite number of stars, then a star should be visible in any line of sight, and the night sky should therefore be white, but we know it's not. As all stars and galaxies are moving away from each other from a single point at an accelerating rate due to dark energy, there are many galaxies whose light will never reach us. The light will never catch up to the Earth as the space between us and the galaxy expands. The Big Bang Theory gives a finite age to the universe, and only stars within the observable universe can be seen. This explains the darkness of the night sky. So the paradox arises if we consider the universe to be static and infinite, whereas we know it's not static and it's finite. So the darkness of the night sky is only supported if we consider a finite age to the universe. That means it did have a defined start point and it is at a certain age just now, about 13 times 10 to the 9 years old, i.e. 13 billion years old. But if we think about the universe to be static and infinite, then we cannot explain the darkness of the night sky. So the only way for the darkness of the night sky to hold true is if we consider a finite age. And this is what was supported by the Big Bang Theory. Lastly, we have relative abundance of hydrogen and helium. Although the Big Bang itself produced helium by hydrogen fusion and lithium, all elements heavier than lithium can only be made by thermonuclear reactions in stars. The relative proportions, i.e. abundance, of the elements that we observe today, hydrogen, helium and other light elements, correspond to what is predicted if the universe started around 14 billion years ago. So the amount of hydrogen, helium and other light elements that we have in the universe is thought to support the idea of the Big Bang Theory. So just to summarise, we have redshift and Hubble's law, cosmic microwave background radiation, temperature of the universe, Ober's paradox and relative abundance of hydrogen and helium. So what I'd recommend for the exam is to maybe pick two or three of these that you think you might remember and make sure you can explain them in more detail. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.